last call for introductions. Seeing none, it's now time for member statements. The member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. Forty-seven years ago, Dell O'Brien began a journey that has culminated in a book entitled Pem Air, the community airline that did it all. In the book, he traces the history of the Pembroke and area airline over which he presided from 1968 until 2000. The book tells a story of amazing success because of the ingenuity of one man and the belief and trust of so many others. Dell recalls how he convinced the leaders of 12 area municipalities to combine their resources and build a 5,000-foot runway. Pam Air was soon airborne with flights to Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and Quebec City. It also carried radioisotopes for Atomic Energy of Canada to Boston and New York and conducted air ambulance missions. I was honoured to receive a personalized copy of his book on the weekend. I have known Dell since 1968, when he was the Conservative candidate in the federal election. He rolled into Barry's Bay with a flatbed, a moving platform, as he spoke to the crowd in my hometown. I was one of the youth assembled with him on that platform. Since then, he has been a, he's continued to be a friend and a trusted mentor. He promised some years ago that when he retired from active law practice, he would write a book so that everyone would get their boarding pass on Pem Air. While Dale goes out of his way to express his appreciation and gratitude to so many, including the employees of Pem Air, it is clear that without his efforts, it's unlikely the airline would have ever gotten off the ground. The official book launch is taking place today from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Travel Lodge in Pembroke, with additional signings in Petawawa, Deep River, and Edenville. I thank and congratulate Dell for his efforts, and I encourage everyone to get a copy of Pem Air, the community airline that did it all. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> for your member statements, the member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. In my riding of Oshawa and parts of Durham and Scarborough, there has been a change a cost savings initiative that undermines patient care in our communities. Occupational therapists, or OTs, and physiotherapists, PTs, are being targeted as budget lines are taking priority over the safety and care of people in need of home care. Following the Auditor General's report on September 1st, local CCACs had to reevaluate their policies and started robbing Peter to pay Paul. Here is what is happening in my area. When someone leaves the hospital and is di discharged to go home, there is a plan put in place. This plan involves what support is necessary to care for them in their homes. Since September, however, occupational therapists and physiotherapists in my community have seen a steep decline in the care that is being allowed. Now a patient must be borderline bedridden to qualify for any services or support. Only the high risk get care. And those who used to get service are now getting waitlisted with no hope of service. I've also heard concerns from another organization, the Durham Region Stroke Recovery Group, who's advocated for extended physiotherapy for individuals recovering from a stroke. In fact, the government supported a motion which called to extend their coverage earlier this year. This would be a proactive investment in our health care system that would make a world of difference for this group of people and could save the government long save the government money in the long term. I ask the government consider the impact of their decisions. Remember the commitment they've made to stroke victims and put the interests of patients first instead of Thank trying you. to balance the budget on their backs. Thank, Thank you. the member from York Centre. Mr. Speaker, the Bernard Battelle Centre for Creative Living recently celebrated the organization's 50th year. The centre was founded in 1965 with only 50 members. The center has grown into an organization which now serves more than 5,000 seniors, including those who are unable to leave their home. The center, located in my riding of York Center, has been dedicated to helping seniors in our community live active, creative, and healthy lifestyles within a Jewish environment. This is very crucial because in our province, the number of seniors aged 65 and over is projected to number 4.1 million by 2036. And as the number of seniors in Ontario increases, it is critically important to ensure that there are enough resources in our communities that are available to assist older Ontarians. The centre is one of the many vital resources we have here in our community. The centre helps to ensure that seniors in York Centre remain mentally, physically and emotionally engaged. The vast range of programs and services offered is nothing short of astounding. Commuter classes, painting, Zumba, creative writing, knitting, pottery, 
and so much more. And because of this establishment, seniors throughout York Center live active, healthy, and vibrant lives and improve their overall quality of life. So, Speaker, today I would like to congratulate and thank them for their milestone achievement of 50 years of servicing the community of York Centre. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Wellington, Halton Hill. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell the House about a unique service organization which channels Chris, Chris, Christian faith into action while seeking to feed a hungry world. Each weekday morning, more than 50 volunteers at Ontario Christian Gleaners, located on Morrison Road in Cambridge, process and then dry five to 6,000 pounds of donated surplus and off-grade vegetables, apples and pears to make nutritious dehydrated soup mixes and fruit snacks for distribution in impoverished countries and refugee camps. The soup mixes and fruit snacks are shipped and distributed by relief and development organizations which are able to ensure that they're given to people in need, are committed to sustainability and development, and combine a gospel message with humanitarian aid. Each three-pound bag of Gleaner's soup mix makes 100 bowls of soup when it's served in the third world. They calculate that one hour of volunteer service at Gleaner's generates 146 food servings. Gleaner, Gleaner's has sent soup mixes and fruit snacks to help feed people in over 40, 40 countries, including Dominican Republic, Haiti, Nicaragua, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Kenya, Sierra Leone, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, and Romania. My friends Bill and Carol Baxter are amongst the hundreds of Gleaners volunteers who give generously of their time and talents, knowing their efforts are making a direct positive difference in the lives of needy people abroad. I join with the member for Cambridge to thank and commend Ontario growers and everyone involved with Ontario Christian Gleaners for putting their faith to work to help feed the famished around the globe. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member's statement, the member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. It has been six long years since Sam Bruno started a campaign to bring a PET scan to Sudbury. Over 32,000 people have signed a petition requesting this government put a PET scan in Sudbury. The hospital from the Northeast, the municipality, the First Nation, the church leader, everybody agrees that the Northeast needs equity of access, needs a PET scan. Since then, new technology now exists for a mobile PET scanner. The minister has asked uh, the PET Steering Committee to review the possibility of a mobile PET scanner. The report is positive. It has been with the minister for months. We have company willing and able to bring a PET scanner to Sudbury. Bruno family is willing to pay for the difference in price to have the docking station, and a PET scan in Sudbury or in Toronto costs the same, so there's no money implication. But we need the minister's action. Where is this minister when it comes to equity of access for the people of the North? Years after years of delay are unacceptable and unfair. I questioned the minister about this recently, and he says that it is coming. Well, winter is also coming, Speaker, and with this means people with cancer having to drive for four, six, 12 hours to go to Toronto through rain, rain sleet, bad weather, uh, freezing rain. They need a PET scan in northeastern Ontario. We've waited long enough. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of announcing the start of a very important construction project in my riding of Kitchener Centre, a new layover facility for GO trains and GO buses that's going to serve my community. In Waterloo Region, there is great urgency to increase rail service between our community and the GTA. Over the past year, I have listened to and worked very closely with a number of stakeholders, including municipal leaders, those in the high-tech sector, manufacturing, the insurance industry, academia, and many more. Together, we have put our concerns before Metrolinx in the province of Ontario. People in Waterloo Region are looking for travel options that are convenient, safe, and reliable. Many of us want to leave our cars at home and take public transit instead. Now, once it's finished in 2016, this transit hub that sits on a nine-acre property is going to include storage and maintenance for four GO trains and 20 GO buses. It's going to allow us to give customers two new morning train trips from Kitchener to Toronto and two new afternoon train trips from Toronto 
back to Kitchener. Mr. Speaker, the Kitchener line is a top priority in the Moving Ontario Forward Plan. It's a 10-year initiative that's going to deliver all-day two-way GO train service to our region. And as a voice for Waterloo Region, I can tell you that advancing better transit to my community is a top priority for me too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Niagara West Warren. Thank you, Speaker. I have a very direct question for my colleagues here. Would you want to live next door to a giant sludge dump? No. Oh, no. Of course not. And neither do my constituents. But that's exactly what's being proposed in Beamsville in the town of Lincoln. No way. Speaker, mem members have strong associations, positive ones with Beamsville, home to so many wineries, tender fruit farms, agritourism business. It's a gorgeous place to live. But right among these beautiful homes, farms, and wineries, a company called Shire Corporation wants to take over a former poultry processing facility and turn the lagoons for water runoff into, get this, human biosolid sludge lagoons. Open lagoons with biosolids, which is a polite term in many respects for treated human waste, being put into the agricultural lands in Niagara, in Beamsville. This is not an agricultural use. We wouldn't want this in the back air. Look, I understand that the products go somewhere, and I've had a chance to speak with the environment minister. I appreciate his attention to this issue. I know he, uh, like me, believes there's environmental technologies that can help with better uses of this, perhaps towards energy. My colleague from Huron Bruce, our environment critic, was talking about just that. That makes a lot more sense than dumping the waste into sludge lagoons and leaving it there. And imagine what's worse, the 100 trucks a day going in and out or the sludge lagoon. I asked Minister Environment to stay on this path and if you would consider intervening in the OMB hearing to stand up for local residents. Thank you. Thank you. The member statements, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. Earlier this fall, I enjoyed attending the banquet marking the Kiwanis Club of Cambridge's 95th anniversary of service to my community of Cambridge and North Dumfries Township and also to those in need around the world. The work these Kiwanians do is certainly worthy of gratitude and recognition in this House. From bursaries for students, air cadets, international aid and 4-H clubs, which just celebrated 100 years of service to our young people, their work is far-reaching. The Kiwanis Boys Choir is a gift to all of the audiences who sit in front of them, and they've re represented Cambridge on the world stage. During the gala celebration, we were entreated to some of their very beautiful vocal music. And I really wanted to pass on my thank yous to choir director James Croft for your vision and ongoing commitment to these young men and boys and for your inspired leadership. Peter Tedisco, the past district government, spoke to me about the collective work that the Kiwanis Clubs do on the international stage. They raise over $100 million annually to support a number of worthy causes. One such cause is their Eliminate project that seeks to end neonatal and maternal tetanus around the globe. In partnership with UNICEF, Kiwanis aims to eliminate this very deadly disease that claims the life of a baby every nine minutes. Now about 17 countries are tetanus-free. I'm proud to work at, recognize the work of the Kiwanians. Thank you to President Sharma. Vice President Don v Pavey and the committed board members for your committed work to the Kiwanis Club. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Kingston and the Ireland. Mr. Speaker, last Sunday I hosted a multi faith candlelight vigil in my riding of Kingston and the Islands to honour all victims of violence in Paris, Baghdad, Beirut, Kenya, and beyond. Approximately 250 Kingstonians came out to soundly reject these assaults on the foundation of our society and our very connection to the people around us. Make no mistake, Ontarians and Canadians categorically denounce these acts of violence. Since the Paris tragedy, we have seen a fire in a mosque in Peterborough, a Hindu temple vandalized in Kitchener, and a young mother in Toronto who was brutally attacked and terrorized. We can and we must do better than this. I encourage each and every one of you to stand strong as we are challenged by the few to commit random, indiscriminate and horrific acts of violence. Guard and hold hard onto your own moments of peace and sense of security in our everyday lives. 
Terrorists want us to look at our neighbours with suspicion and fear. Kingstonians reject that. Be united with your communities and denounce acts of violence, for to fail is to succumb to the aim of tourism. Oh, sorry, terrorism. Si seulement la victime de Paris peut être... If only the victims of Paris who paid the ultimate sacrifice, we should think of them. Merci. Well done. Well done. I thank all members for their statements. It's